amid an ongoing Ukrainian cross-border attack, Russian border region on, on Russian border region Kursk, it has announced a state of emergency. The acting governor of Kursk, Alexei Smirnov, announced emergency via Telegram. Right, without elaborating on what the measures would be, reports suggest that intense battle is ongoing along the borders. Ukrainian forces have pushed to the northwest of the border town of Sudza, the last operational transshipping point of Russian natural gas to Europe. The chief of Russia's general staff, Valery Gerasimov, told Putin that Russian forces have halted a thrust by up to a thousand Ukrainian soldiers, more than three times the figure that Russia's defense ministry had stated. Now, according to Gerasimov, the advance was stopped by the actions of the units covering the state's border together with border guards and reinforcement units with airstrikes, missiles and artillery fire. A claim refuted by Ukraine, which said that the Russian units made no headway and in fact suffered significant losses. Meanwhile, the United States said it was seeking an understanding from Ukraine of the attack, claiming that it had no advanced knowledge of it. State Department spokesperson Ma person Matthew Miller said that rules on Ukrainian use of weapons, U.S. weapons, authorized in areas over the Russian border remained in effect. However, it cleared that the ongoing Ukrainian actions against Russia are not in violation of those rules. someone with whom the secretary has had one-on-one -on -one phone calls. All right, for more on this, we're now being joined live from Italy by Peter Kuznick, Director of Nuclear Studies, Institute of American University. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on World DNA. Sir, Zelensky has made no reference to the attack. Even Ukraine's general staff made no, has not acknowledged the attack. Is this a new stealth strategy? How do you assess this? It, it doesn't make very much sense. I think everybody is scratching their heads and wondering, why is Ukraine doing this? Mm -hmm. What do they hope to accomplish? They are undermanned and outgunned in eastern Ukraine, fighting against the Russians. They need more reinforcements there. Why they are doing this, it, it could be for to, to divert Russian troops away from the east have to fight to protect the border, or it could be for psychological reasons that they need, they haven't had any victories to claim for quite some time and to show that they still have the capability to surprise Russia and to actually penetrate Russia. Uh, maybe that's going to raise morale. But in terms of the long run impact of what's going on in this war, this is not going to change anything. The other possibility is that they want to seize some of those uh, oil pipelines. Now, that's a possibility. There is also a nuclear facility, but Russia has reinforced that. Both sides are claiming that the other side is suffering heavy casualties. But we don't know yet. It's too early to know what's really happening. Mr. Kuznick, as you mentioned, it's very, everyone's scratching their heads and what Ukraine is really planning. And of course, there is no acknowledgement of it yet. Uh, I also wanted to understand from you, would you consider this as a possible reason? Now, it's a well-known fact by now that Zelensky and essentially Ukraine is extremely concerned about the prospects of Trump coming to power in the US. And we're just about three months out from the elections. Trump has made it clear that he will ensure that the war is off as if he comes to power. Do you feel that could be propelling Ukraine to carry out an attack like this to perhaps gain maximum bargaining power before it's called off as Trump has claimed he would? I don't, I don't see how this is going to improve Ukraine's bargaining mm -hmm. position. Uh, the Russians are going to send in their troops. They're going to send in their planes. They're going to drive the Ukrainians out. And they're going to, I assume, kill or capture most of the invaders. It's going to be seen, I'm afraid, as folly on the part of Zelensky and the Ukrainian leadership, a desperation move. And they are in a pretty desperate situation now. The sentiment in the United States is two to one in favor of a ceasefire and negotiations. So regardless, if it's Harris and Walls in power or Trump and Vance, 
I think that this war's days are limited. They're numbered. And we've seen diplomatic efforts by Modi, by Xi Jinping, by Lula, by the Pope, by Guterres. I think the world has seen that this is not, Ukraine is not going to win and that they're not going to drive the Russian forces out of the areas where they are now. And they're going to lose a little bit more ground. Uh, and so eventually they're going to have to sit down and negotiate, but they'll be in weaker position. I don't see how this can succeed. You make some very pertinent points there, uh, Mr. Kuznick. Uh, you know, you don't see how this is going to help them regardless. And who comes to power in the U.S.? It seems like the numbers for the number of days for the war are, of course, just on a backward count from here. Thank you so much for joining. That was Mr. Peter Kuznick, Director of Nuclear Studies Institute at American University, joining us from Italy.